Paul. Hi, uh, my <clears throat> welcome to this presentation done at last minute. So, uh, yeah, it's about 4K audio, uh, the do's, the don'ts, and the pitfalls. Um, what is me? Uh, I am Buzz, also known as Barzel, from uh, the demo group Northern Dragons. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, this talk is more oriented towards demo sceners than pure hackers. Uh, so you might need some kind of background or knowledge about the demo scene to uh, understand the whole scope of this. Uh, I'm here from Quebec, Canada. Uh, that's why I've got this funny accent. Uh, what? I don't know what. Uh, you're better, better than me to do this accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I might not speak fast enough or clear enough or whatever. If, if so, just raise your hand and ask a question or whatever. I might make you repeat a couple of times to be able to understand fully, but should be okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm... Uh, from the demo group Norton Dragons, uh, and I'm usually I'm a graphician, designer or whatever, and also a part-time coder, uh, specializing to the synthesizers for the the 4K intros. Uh, and yeah, I'm not a musician, but added some music, uh, some or lots but nothing really official or whatever, it's more to have fun. Uh, so what are 4Ks? Uh, it's like the big demos, squeezed, squeezed into 4 kilobytes. Uh, and how to, do we squeeze that in 4 kilobytes? And what big is 4 kilobytes? It's really, really small, okay? Uh, it's approximately, uh, a usual email, like one page of text, or uh, you know those big fat icons in Windows, like the huge ones? Well, that's 4K. So uh, we've got a uh, full animated uh, demo with sound, and that takes the same room. Uh, and how do we do it? It's really important. We're doing, we're using packers. Packers are like, uh, you know, WinZip. You zip your thing and you could like uh, just choose uh, save as uh, auto-executable or auto-unzip or whatever. So it's basically the same thing. You compress all your data and you put some little code to unpack that. So it will decompress, then run. Uh, I really uh, thought it would be interesting and important to know that because uh, it really changes uh, the approaches a lot. Uh, because all the data needs to be compressed the best way possible. Um, so, the overview, well, it was supposed to be before, whatever. Uh, so, uh, we're talking about the main concept behind 4K audio, why to do it, uh, what is a 4K toilet, uh, different approaches, uh, how to make something really interesting, something different than the rest, or at least appealing to the ear, uh, and the real solution, like the, yeah, what we can, like, remember from all this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, why do we do 4K audio? Because uh, a 4K without audio is really boring. Uh, and generating sound is gratifying, is instant. You, you, you put some, some little code, you 
execute it, and whoa, it's magic. You have sound. Uh, and yeah, it's easy to do. To do something real basic, it's, it's real, really quick. Uh, and because of all that, it's fun to do. Uh, yeah. So the different approaches uh, in, in this seminar, or whatever you can call it, uh, I'm, I won't be showing code. I won't be uh, talking about really technical things uh, because it's kind of easy to find more information about that. And, uh, well, it's, it's more interesting to, uh, to understand the big, huge concept behind that more than just like a tutorial of the, the RECI part to do, how to do that specific. Uh, trick. So yeah, there are different approaches that have been used or are currently used. Uh, the most simple one is MIDI files. You just make a MIDI and you play it. Or you generate a MIDI uh, runtime and you play it. Uh, well, I will go uh, more in details after just the list. Uh, MIDI, uh, there's the really simple sine wave and white noise. Uh, the chip tune approach, uh, slow empty tune, like just not putting anything in your tune, so that's lighter. Uh, a, a big synth with tons of feature and clever compression, uh, and a mix of all that. So yeah, the advantage and inconvenient of every one of each. Uh, MIDI, it sounds bad. <laughs> it sounds bad. It sounds like the old games of 92, 93. Uh, Doom has good music, but it's far from the real thing. Uh, but it's small. It's really small. It compresses well, uh, and the call to uh, to make the, the sound is really simple because you, you've got notes and you say, hey, video card, uh, sound card, sorry, uh, play me that song and it plays and that's all. So you don't, you don't have to generate the sound and so you drew up all the interesting stuff but it's light and not too complex. But you've got timing issues because MIDI is uh, done in real time. It's not uh, like you generate a buffer and you play the buffer. It's really, uh, there's a note, there's another one, and another one, and each time you want to play a note, you've got to ask for it. And you cannot really ask for a delay before your note. It's just, uh, I want uh, a C sharp on piano. Now I want the D sharp on piano. Now it's that one. So uh, most of the time you will have some really small delays because your, your intro, uh, all the video, the visuals will be getting all the CPU. So uh, at the end, the audio will be uh, kind of a bit delayed or whatever. So the, the synchronization is not exactly uh, as it should be. So most of the time, you, you don't notice it real much, but you, you feel it more. So it, it sounds crappy. Uh, and the other things is that it's not uniform. You change computers and it could, it's, it's not sure. It can be the same, but it's not uh, for sure the same sound because some Really, the, the musicians that have really nice sound cards, they like to, uh, to change the samples, the sample bank, uh, and have something more realistic. So they will, sometimes they could pay something like $10,000 to get real nice sound fonts and upload that into their sound card to have something that really sounds better than MIDI. But if it's not what you were wanting to, to do, it, will, it might some sound crappy in their configuration. So it's not uniform. We'll change from a machine to the other. And 
Most importantly, it's old and unlinked. <laughs> uh, it's old, and since it's old, it's it's not as it's too easy, too easy to be leaked. Everyone can do MIDI, and it's it's also too easy to recognize it. You you can't just play a MIDI and people not notice it's MIDI. It's it, you know it. Uh, so yeah, it's unleaked. And also uh, on the the benefits, it has lots of different sounds, and all those sounds are recorded by professionals. So uh, if you listen to the sound individually, uh, it can sound really good. Like oh, that's really someone with his banjo and. <laughs> but uh, doing the whole tune, it. It will sound MIDI. Uh, so the other way to do it, the sign and white noise. Well, uh, ouch. <laughs> uh, basically, it's like any noob uh, just thinks thinks about sounds. And what is sound? It's it's a wave. So what is the closer to a wave we've got? And we see in the demo scene the sine wave. So, it, it's nice, but it, it's not really. It's more. It's it's a pure wave of sound. It's it's nice. It's nice wave, but it's it's only one frequency, and that's make it that makes it really uh, boring, it's not interesting, you cannot really do uh, filters on it, uh, you cannot really transform it. If you've got a sine wave and you decide to, oh, I will chop half the frequencies, well, you've got one. So you don't have any frequency left. It's, it's sad. It's, it can give a really sense of pureness, uh, like a sound of, uh, of crystal, you know, uh, you've got a, a glass and doing with your finger, it, it sounds like pure, simple, clean, and boring. So uh, most noobs think, are thinking about signs because of, well, a waveform, but you don't need uh, your waveform to be, yeah, the the one wave alone, uh, and white noise because well it, you you need drums, so I hear uh, a cymbal, shh shh, oh, shh shh, it's just the, the white noise, shh, with an envelope, shh. so it, it's easy, but sometimes it's too easy. Uh, so if you've got only sign and white noise, it, it's simple, it can fit with your intro, uh, but might, it might feel too, feel too simple. And also, it's not so small. Doing signs, uh, it will cost you something, because most of the time you've got to go with floating points, and floating points are a bitch. Uh, they are huge and they are not really well uh, implemented and it's not as compressible as the usual ints because all your, uh, your program, all your code is integers, it's all the same thing and for some, uh, for some little floats there's a whole new set of, uh, of upcodes and registers and whatever so it's all different, uh, and for the, the packing, it's really important. The, the main thing about the packer, what it is looking for, it's repetitions. So uh, it, it looks for patterns, and if the pattern is the same, well, I just say to, like, I've got three times that pattern. So it's not, like, uh, deciding to, uh, it's not, writing uh, or memorizing like the three patterns. It's just memorizing that it's that pattern three times. 
that's how compression works usually. So uh, the more all your program is shapes, shaped similarly, the more it's like all the same thing repeat, repeated over and over, the more you get uh, a good compression. So uh, it can end up like really huge as a raw file, but when it's packed, it will shrink a lot. Uh, but if you've got like random noise, it's really different things, it won't compress. Like an MP3, it won't compress because it's, it's arranged like noise. Uh, but a WAV file is much more compressible because it's always the same kind of values. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I was saying uh, in different words, it lacks harmonics. Uh, there's one WAV. And harmonics are the, that same frequency, but over or under. So uh, you've got the and the mixed together. And uh, other kinds of uh, waveforms like uh, sawtooth, uh, it's that way because it shapes, uh, it gets uh, some kinds of sine waves added together and kind of offsetted and all more like uh, thinner so you can think about it visually like that that it adds up and subtracts to end up uh, with a shape that is not a sign because there are really many different frequency together uh, yeah and it sounds new <laughs> chip tune uh, lots of people are thinking about 4K audio. They are thinking about, oh, I use chip tunes. Chip tunes are really small. Uh, yeah, they are small, but not small enough. Uh, because more, most of the time they are done with trackers that are not made to uh, make data that, that compresses well. And most of the time uh, they use small samples, which you won't use. It's a 4K. You've got like 1K for the audio. You're, you won't waste that with uh, a pre-made sample. You will replace that by something generated. Uh, so yeah, it needs a, a completely new approach. Uh, but you, you could get some inspiration from uh, the old synthesizer from the 80s to do, do something. But it's not the, the only way. Uh, the empty slow thing is the raw approach. I need it to be small. I will make it like really few things so it will be small. Uh, okay, that works. That will work for anything. It's brute force. It's really you, you can't have something more basic than that, but uh, it will be boring and really not impressive. If you've got one note every three seconds, dum, 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 will be boring. Uh, unless you've got a uh, design in your demo that really fits with it. Uh, that can happen. Uh, I remember uh, from Fairlight, uh, not last year, the other year before, there was a growing thing. Uh, they did that for assembly. Uh, that was all gray with uh, ambient occlusion and there, wa there was some growing trees and shaking and it was only uh, the piano, the, the first in instrument from the, the default MIDI uh, system and it, it's really simple and it was like the same note over and over and, and it wasn't boring because the design was there. It all fitted well all together but that won't happen uh, every time because if every intro are using like really slow and simple stuff, you will need something really more ener energetic to, uh, to, to get out of the crowd. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they also approach, uh, which I've used, uh, more often than not, is the big synth with lots of feature and lots of cleverness. That's simple. It's like general. It's really fun. I'll put tons of stuff and 
I will find a way to make it fit. Uh, so it needs cleverness, that's the main pitfall. Uh, it's hard to find cleverness. Uh, and also trying to be too much clever is a trap. Uh, because uh, when you're, you remember all of the data you will be generating, it will be really few data about you, you need that to have some data. It needs uh, to be compressed. So if you're thinking about algorithms to, uh, to take some data and generate more data and generate more data from that, every time you generate, uh, it's more code. And code compresses much less better than data. So, uh, so yeah, most of the time you, you're better off without trying to find funny algorithms and just save it straight and it might be better. Like uh, just something real simple, uh, a byte or an int. I use a byte because it's uh, smaller than an int, so at the end it will be smaller. Not every time. If you're always dealing with integers, then your bytes will use different codes and it will be compressed uh, much less. So there are all those little traps that are sad, but they are there. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you try to make something big that, uh, that do lots of things and, uh, and you, yeah, you end up uh, without knowing it's crap until it's done. Uh, because it's, it will be big and you will be like planning a lot in advance. And okay, after that I will do that and that and that. And at the end, when it's done, it might be too huge and uselessly huge. Uh, also, a big scent. Uh, you, like I did, you could make a tool, a nice interface for your musician. Uh, and that's instant love and instant hate. Your musician will be like, oh, that's wonderful. Really, that's awesome. A synthesizer for 4K intros and I can like play with it. But now he sees your synthesizer and yeah, but it's, it's not the tracker I'm used to use. Uh, the, you, you need that feature. Uh, that feature is not correct. Uh, and could we have that? And, and that I don't understand. It's too complicated. So, yeah, can be pain in the ass. Or you can use a mix of all that. Uh, but uh, it will make, uh, it will sum the workload, the size of it, and maybe the traps too. Uh, so you've got to be selective. Uh, if you decide to make a tool, well, do not include everything in it. Um, talking about tools, uh, I will show you what I did. Uh, there are, you know, all the approaches, uh, I've been using them, well, most of them. Um, we will start with uh, the first one added, uh, it was in 2004, it was for, uh, well, that, that's the, the first uh, thing I added. The first synth, it was just raw code. Uh, there was no tools or whatever, and it doesn't display, okay, it displays. There's some. The sound in that, uh, it's just uh, sawtooth with uh, some weird 
uh, low, uh, low pass filter. Uh, I'm a graphician and also a programmer, and I was doing a software synthesizer. So I was uh, starting with some other bases from uh, like a musician or something like that. So uh, I was thinking about uh, just taking my sawtooth and putting a blur on it, averaging with the neighbors. And that was giving me a low pass filter. And it did. You heard it. Uh, but it's too big and much too complicated for, for nothing. But it worked. Um, after that, I uh, did with my fellow members, members of the Martin Dragons demo group, uh, Cube Throw screen for which I did uh, a huge uh, tool it was uh, not too long after the the first one I think not sure uh, but I did a tool and uh, it was great and I put lots of energy in the interface it was really nice uh, I'm a user of Fruity Loops uh, so it's not your standard tracker so our musicians were like Ah, it's not good. Can't use that. Fruity Loops, whoa. Okay, so uh, that wasn't really useful for them. So uh, at the end, uh, Sierra did the music. And uh, another member from Dashboard was uh, porting the music into the tool. That's not from a 4K, 4, uh, 4K uh, intro, it's 12K. So it's still small, but... You can hear the, the cutoff filter. The noise. And the wah, it's the cutoff less and more. Like for the big bass. of effects like reverb, uh, which is the reason why it took so long to render, uh, because of the reverb that generates and pastes the, the same sample over and over with more and more cutoff. Thank you. Uh, and the uh, nice thing about that, uh, not this one, um, this one. Yeah, so uh, at the beginning of the presentation, uh, my nickname is Buzz. So I called uh, the synthesizer just for the fun of it. It's Buzz uh, apostrophe S 
zent, zent. So it's non, not pronounceable at all. <laughs> Buzz synth. Uh, yeah. So, so that's the the tool. It's it's nice. I had lots of fun doing the the interface. It's all done with GDI because I tried to use uh, C Boulder with like all their uh, their funny uh, you know uh, like knobs and whatever sliders and buttons, but wasn't like close enough to Fruity Loop to my taste. So I decided to do all all of it myself. And yeah, it's nice. You can uh, like turn knobs, and it's fun. It's fun. Um, the uh, sad thing about that, it's too old. I don't remember much uh, how you've got to start to get a basic sound. I tried uh, some like an hour ago when I was uh, <laughs> preparing that uh, that speech, but uh, yeah. I haven't found the way uh, <laughs> because all the uh, all the settings are all zero by default, so you've got to put them at some uh, some values uh, like uh, attack. It must must be non-zero. Frequency is a uh, well. There there is uh, what a cut uh, some. False resonant filter was much more like a high pass uh, clipping uh, to do like nice distortion. Uh, reverb, like how many times you reverb and uh, how much you put a low pass on it. And even panning and volume. And all those were uh, linkable with LFOs, so you could automate that. So I have a like trans effect, uh, and there was uh, like your patterns that you would edit in that. The patterns, how many times it repeats, uh, the instrument it uses, the offset at which it, it starts, and uh, the length, length of the, the loop. Uh, was nice, was fun, but not enough. Uh, so uh, I dropped that, and uh, the next thing was uh, Blobzilla, which, which uh, uh, we decided it, well, I'll show you. Yeah, 4,000. We cut the 96 uh, bytes that were over just to fit with the name. What you are hearing is all notes, all uh, MIDI sounds. Uh, but there is some fake theremin sound. Uh, should be... oh, not now. Uh, yeah, this is synthesized. So I hacked the sound bank of MIDI, which is standard on all Windows machines. Uh, and copy pasting the samples and uh, making them shorter or longer to uh, make different pitches. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So all the sounds are MIDI, except the terrain. For this one, uh, we didn't use uh, a tool. It was all uh, written by hand in a .h header file. Uh, painful, painful. Uh, but well, uh, we started from uh, a module thing. Sierra did, uh, did the nice uh, .it and I was like browsing the .it. Okay, that note. How much time after? Okay, and after? Okay, now this one. And yeah. Lots of typing, boring, but it works. Thank you. Um, after that uh, was fun. Uh, we used a new tool that I did. Uh, not that one. Oh, shit. Uh, OK, I don't have it here. 
Uh, so it was basically taking the same approach as the previous one, uh, ripping off the sound bank of MIDI. Uh, we were taking that, but adding filters on it. So adding uh, some clipping to have some distortion, uh, adding cutoff filters and all that kind of things. Uh, at the end, it wasn't too bad. Uh, but it sounds still a bit MIDI on the edges. Uh, it sounded like that. And our musician was pissed off about that too. He left the group. <laughs> And yet the sound is different, maybe because of the MIDI that is different, I have no clue. But I think it sounds different. So yeah, that's the problem with MIDI. So yeah, all the drums are from, from your, the, the sound band. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, the the tool basically sucked. Uh, after that, I started on a on a new one, which was quite close, uh, but with uh, synthesized uh, waveform instead of ripping off the sound bank. Uh, so it was this one, uh, Synth 3, the acid station. Uh, uh, I was a fan of uh, the acid sounds uh, when I was writing that, so uh, I was trying. Uh, this one has, uh, yeah, tunes. I tried for fun to uh, emulate something that is known. Uh, no, not the, not the pattern, the old tune. Yeah, take more time to do it, right? Behind that, I was thinking to be real clever, real clever. Okay, uh, I was like, uh, well, guessing and learning a bit and well, about uh, music theory. And there was all those tunes where they keep a riff and change the chord. So it's like, well, a basic chord and they do some sequence of notes and they change the chord and do more notes. So I had a sequence of chords and the notes. So I was thinking it was really clever and you would just change the chords sometimes over time. But uh, at the end to get something interesting you're always changing chord. So, uh, might not be the best thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, all the algorithm you, uh, you use to uh, save on data, you, you generate more code. So it's not a nice trade-off. So after, after that, uh, I did a tracker, this one. Uh, so I dropped the visual interface, which was so fun to make. Uh, 
I went into uh, basic console mode. Uh, and yeah, there is no mouse support or whatever, but it gets the job done. And our musician was really using that tool. Wow! Uh, because it was a tracker. You can see there are the setting for every possible instrument. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the playlist, the patterns. Uh, if I load the tune, uh, F10, I think. Uh, no, F11. OK. F11, it loads. Uh, it looks like that. So it's basically the same as the other tools. You've got your pattern looping uh, with its own instrument. And next is the other pattern with its instrument looping. Now that. And if we play it, it vibrates. Oh, it's the pattern that you are playing. So uh, this one is really a mashup of every other technique, technique uh, but without the cleverness. So uh, it did compress uh, well enough. Uh, the sound part, the data, was compre compressed less, was bigger at the end. But uh, the, the code to generate from the data was much smaller. So the trade-off was good. Yeah, so... Uh yeah, okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, so this was is my Zen tracker. And the nice feature is that you can, like in the other uh, Zen I did, you can export uh, the .h the header file so you can see the real uh, data and you can change the order of every pattern to get something more friendly with the packer and all that. You can save like two or three bytes at the end, <laughs> which can be useful. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the lessons learned from the tools. It's fun to make. It's fun to tweak. Uh, it shows the potential of your code. You just add your code, you start your tool, you add in a note or another one, you play with your knobs, and you hear the sound and the change in the sound with your features. Uh, so for uh, FX and filters, it's really nice. Uh, but know who you're making it for. You're probably not making it for yourself, so do it for your musician. Make it look uh, like he's used to uh, to use for, for uh, well to make uh, music, so a tracker might be much better than an FL clone. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, at the end, know what you want first. That's really important. If you want something that really sounds like an orchestra, don't use something that sounds like cheap techno. Uh, use MIDI instead of a soft synth. Uh, if you're going for a techno thing, don't use MIDI. It won't fit. You have such soft synth with filters and all, it will be awesome. Uh, and yeah, there is no fancy global solution to do it all uh, with no trade-off or whatever. Remember, we're dealing with 4Ks. It's small, so there, there's nothing general about that. It all, it's all specific. And at the, at the end, you will be chopping parts of your, uh, your header file or whatever to make it fit. And yeah, we also got to leave room for the visuals because 4K is, is not all the room you have. You have maybe a K and a half, and you've got really to deal that with those doing the, the visuals. So they will always be telling you, 
Your sound is too big. I need that room for my fractals or whatever. Uh, so you've got to shrink or be really convincing. Uh, I use the second option. <laughs> so that's why uh, Kitrack is so blurry and looks like nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, question and answers? Questions? Oh, yeah, step back. I didn't show it. Uh, I can show it while we're ah while we're doing the question and answers. Uh, yeah, the last we did. Uh, p -p 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 is there somewhere here? Yeah. But it lasts a little while, and we're three minutes. Uh, well. We're 27 minutes into the break. Please. Uh, question, yeah? So. The sound. Yeah, can you repeat again? What? Back. Oh, uh, for newbies, uh, it, it can be it can be fun to do. Uh, you will need some kind of framework, maybe. Uh, ask to your uh, friend programmer who... What? Okay. Oh, that, that's good. Uh, well, if you've got uh, lots of... Uh, of background in music, you can find uh, clever ways to uh, do your things, maybe. Uh, can be really interesting. Uh, and the fun thing is that you can really think about your, uh, your algorithm to produce really strange sounds. It can be really uh, interesting to do things for that. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and like I was saying, it's kind of simple. Uh, you don't know funny API APIs. Uh, you don't know, you don't have to know uh, like really complex uh, programming tricks. It's all mathematics, and it's just that and playing with data. So at the end, it can be really uh, fun to do and easy. Other question. They've always been internal. Uh, they were not uh, publicly released. I'm thinking about releasing them. Uh, I've got maybe some polishing to do on them so they, that they are really usable by a newcomer. But uh, yeah, maybe in some time you will see uh, some of those on Poet or whatever, Sindador again, all that. Other question? Yeah. Uh, well, um, you, you mentioned that you did a low-pass filter by blurring yeah. the sample. That's pretty cool. Have you like figured? Have you figured? Like, have you thought about other ways to, to like move textures or something like that? Yeah. Like, accelerated by hardware. Yeah, yeah. That's something that I've heard uh, talking about a lot. Uh, like, uh, hey, blurring. It's it's fun. We could. Uh, really use the, the video card to do it, but uh, it's 4K and doing a cheap blur is much less costly usually than uh, calling a uh, function from DirectX. And you don't have to, uh, if you're doing it all in software instead of hardware and all, you don't have to declare some specific texture, memory, and upload it and set the format or whatever. You can just have your big, fat uh, array, your buffer, and your play into that. And that will be smaller. And smaller than that is using another approach, which I've been using lately, which is much more closer to what real people are, are doing it for real sense. It's uh, somehow based on physics. You just 
you've got your uh, the level of the wave in time. You've got it, and you just uh, do uh, how to say that. Uh, uh, you put acceler acceleration on it. You put a second value driven by that. So when it goes like that, it just goes slower. So it won't catch the small peaks. It will just get the, the larger one. But you've got some little delay over time. So uh, that's a nice trade-off for something much more simple and faster also. Another question? No question? Well, that's good. Uh, it's one past four, so... Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs>